Games have come far since that fateful day when Left Line first clashed bats with Right Line in the epic saga of Pong. See? Told you it was epic. Blockbuster titles like Uncharted, Mass Effect, and I Love You Colonel Sanders have proved just how emotionally powerful a video game narrative can be, consistently pushing the boundaries and winning countless awards in the process. So why haven't we seen more acclaimed filmmakers cross the void? Sure, a whole Hollywood boulevard's worth of stars have lent their voice to games, from Sean Bean to Susan Sarandon to Mark Hamill, but when it comes to famed directors, writers, and other movie-making folk, the count is much lower, and even less when you consider how many got actively involved beyond just simple trailer work or consultation, not that those are simple. And who can blame them? Storytelling can be hard enough in your standard 90-minute rom-com action horror documentary without accounting for unruly players who wander off the clearly laid path before them, missing that carefully choreographed set piece because they were too busy trying to jump out of the map again. But there are a few famous exceptions of notable auteurs who bravely delved into the muddy trenches of video game production, whether it's through creative lead roles, building building a story from the ground up, or even starting their own studio. I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and here are 10 famous filmmakers who helped make video games. Number 10. Clive Barker A fairly obvious one to start, given that Mr. Barker's name is stuck to every video game he's worked on. Not without justification, mind, as Barker is the horror mastermind behind the iconic Hellraiser and Candyman series, among countless other highly acclaimed works. Less positively received was his last video game release in 2007, Clive Barker's Jericho. The squad-based horror FPS was let down by drab shooting and terrible teammate AI, but the elements of supernatural story and grisly enemy designs certainly had shades of Barker's nightmare-inducing best. According to interviews at the time, he was involved in every aspect of the game, wanting to blend cinematics with the immersive possibilities of gameplay, and while it was far from a classic, you can't fault his commitment. Before Jericho, he produced 2001's Undying, another horror FPS which fared much better with critics, and even lent his iconic, gravelly voice to one of the characters. Ah yes, brother. What madness has your family caused this time? There was also the unfinished Demonic, cancelled in 2006, and going way back, a pair of movie tie-in titles in 1990, Nightbreed the Action Game and Nightbreed the Interactive Movie. Number 9. J.J. Abrams One of the biggest names in the film industry today, J.J. Abrams' CV speaks for itself. Not only has he crossed the treacherous threshold between Star Trek and Star Wars, the director and screenwriter is also famed for his work on Super 8, Cloverfield, Armageddon, Mission Impossible, uh, the list goes on. And soon, that list could extend to the gaming world. In 2018, Abrams' film production studio, Bad Robot, launched their own video game development division, teaming up with Warner Bros. Interactive and Chinese publishing titan Tencent. In 2020, they hired a couple of Valve veterans, Left 4 Dead creator Michael Booth and Anna Sweet of Steam fame. The Valve link makes sense, considering in 2013, Abrams and Valve head Gabe Newell announced a joint venture to produce movies based on Portal and Half-Life. And while those movie tie-ins have rather predictably stalled, Bad Robot Games did release their first game last year, a mobile and PC title, Spy Jinx, created in tandem with Epic Games. Abrams himself is likely not too involved in the minutiae of development, but his high-profile and recent hires make this budding studio one to watch out for, if only for the inevitable 4K ray-tracing enhanced lens flares that will sear our eyeballs clean off our faces. Number 8. Spike Lee Shelton Jackson Lee has been arguably the most prominent flag bearer for African American culture in indie and mainstream cinema, producing powerful films like Malcolm X, Do the Right Thing, and 2018's Black Klansman. Over the last few decades, Spike Lee has never been afraid to challenge major societal issues head-on, tackling racism, poverty, media control, and religion with style and poignancy. So, naturally, his trademark provocative approach was just what 2K needed for their sports game about balls and hoops. Bringing in Lee to write, direct, and 
and produced the single-player My Career mode for NBA 2K16. The story, titled Living the Dream, follows a character called Frequency Vibrations, or Freak, exploring such classic sports time tribulations as jealous friends, manipulative agents, and frayed family relationships. As ambitious a move as this was, 2K16 headed up the now popular trend of sports games with narrative-driven story modes, it fell somewhat flat with critics disappointed by too many cliches and a strict narrow path that brushed aside much of the appeal of creating your own custom star. But hey, at least they tried something new. In a genre, happy to charge $60 for a quick roster change and some more loot boxes. Sports time, here we go, oh yeah. Number 7. Andy Serkis well, if it isn't everyone's favourite hobbit strangling monkey man. Andrew Circus Performer is the go-to guy for next level motion capture, putting his whole body into each performance in iconic roles such as Gollum in The Lord of the Rings, Kong in King Kong, and Caesar the Chimpanzee in the Planet of the Apes reboot trilogy. In 2011, he founded The Imaginarium Studios, dedicated to the art of performance capture, so given his talents, video games were a natural fit. His most notable work came with 2010's Enslaved Odyssey to the West, an often overlooked action adventure by Ninja Theory. Circus gave his voice, lightness, and motion capture prowess to the main protagonist called Monkey, because typecasting, and also did the voice for the malevolent overlord Pyramid. Additionally, each one of the masks you pick up in game offers a brief snapshot of another life, Andy Circus's life, to be precise, who contributed his own pictures to these segments. Just like flicking through photo albums with the Simeon Smeagol himself, except there's also a decent game with it, too. Circus was also involved in Ninja Theory's 2007 hack and slash Heavenly Sword, acting as dramatic director, helping write the story and providing voice work and mocap for King Bohan. Waiting! Waiting! To sink her slavering jaws into my sacred genitals! Number 6. John Carpenter. There's plenty of crossover between films and games within the horror genre, and one of the biggest legends of spooky cinema is John Carpenter. Notorious for Halloween, The Thing, and Escape from New York, Carpenter has had a long-running history with the games industry, and even at the ripe age of 72, apparently still dabbles in a dose of casual 200-hour-plus Ubisoft open-world gaming. Good on you, John. His works have influenced plenty of games, horror and otherwise. Big Trouble in Little China inspired Raiden's design in Mortal Kombat, for example, and there's Solid Snake's uncanny resemblance to Kurt Russell's Snake Pliskin from Carpenter's Escape from New York. Carpenter's first video game credit was in composing the music for 1998 puzzler Sentinel Returns, but his most noteworthy role came from directing the cinematics for Fear 3 in 2011, along with narrating and providing creative input for the story. While still a respectable title, Carpenter's expertise wasn't enough to stop Fear 3 being considered the weakest of the series, a running theme so far. Carpenter almost had another game to his name. In 2005, he collaborated with Tiger Hill Entertainment, founded by another famed director, John Woo, on an action title called Psychopath, but the project was sadly scrapped. Number 5. Justin Roiland the man of a thousand voices, well, a few voices at least, that all sound remarkably similar, but it's a solid case of quality over quantity when it comes to the co-creator of Rick and Morty. Alongside the breakout animated comedy that spawned millions of high IQ gatekeepers, Justin Roiland also co-created Solar Opposites and voiced characters from numerous hit animated shows, from Adventure Time to Gravity Falls and Robot Chicken. Not content with just being a voice actor, animator, writer, producer and director, Roiland added video video game studio head to his long list of talents, launching virtual reality studio Squanch Tendo in 2016, which was swiftly renamed to Squanch Games to avoid legal troubles. <laughs> Nintendo, am I right? Wait, no, Mr. Bowser, put the lawyer down, please, I'm sorry! Their first title was the wonderfully weird Accounting VR, made with developer Crows 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 and the designer of the Stanley Parable. It's a perfectly accurate simulation of real-world accounting, complete with skeletons, xylophones, bunny rabbit gangsters, and copious swearing. Their first core title, however, was Trover Saves the Universe, released in 2019, and offered a hilarious VR-optimized platformer that's essentially Rick and Morty in all but name, filled with the same brand of bizarre ad-libbed humor Roiland has built his squanchy empire on. Number 4. Kurt Schilling Okay, fine, Kurt Schilling isn't a famed movie director or actor, but you have seen him on TV, probably, if you watch a lot of baseball, which obviously I do. Take that, idiot! Strike. 
but Schilling's story is so fascinating we had to include it. Kurt Schilling is a former Major League Baseball pitcher from 1998 to 2007, but sadly we know precious little about American rounders. We're interested in the time he founded 38 Studios in 2006, a developer that created just one game, 2012's Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning. Schilling's development dream team featured game industry veterans including Grant Kirkhope, the rare composer behind Banjo-Kazooie and Gold9007, and Ken Rolston, lead designer for Morrowind and Oblivion. They also hired fantasy author R. R.A. Salvatore to build the game's extensive dialogue and background lore. The result was an impressively robust RPG that reviewed well and sold 1.2 million copies. But the studio shut down just three months later. Why? Because they needed 3 million sales to break even thanks to the whopping $75 million loan to help Schilling get started, paid for by the state of Rhode Island to help attract more specialist jobs to the state. Hundreds of employees were laid off and Rhode Island taxpayers were left to foot the bill, turning Schilling's field of dreams into a financial nightmare. There you go, a film reference, it all came back round in the end. Number 3. Steven Spielberg much like his old Indiana Jones buddy George Lucas, Spielberg has his own storied history in the games industry. Back in the mid-90s, when cinematic storytelling was more of an added bonus than an expectation in video games, Steven Spielberg founded an offshoot of his DreamWorks film studio titled DreamWorks Interactive. This was partially a passion project for Spielberg, who had long been a fan of gaming and recognised its storytelling potential. Naturally, the studio took advantage of DreamWorks licences, producing movie tie-ins like The Lost World, Jurassic Park and Small Soldiers. It was EA's 1999 shooter Medal of Honor that was the real breakout hit for Spielberg. His vision spawned the iconic series, presenting the concept as a respectful, almost reverent take on World War II in contrast to the previous gaming portrayals, and he went on to produce the story for the first three installments. But his weirdest foray into game production was with 2008 puzzler Boom Blocks. Spielberg worked with EA to produce a game that he could play with his kids, and his children even gave feedback, testing out early prototypes. So that's one of the biggest directors in cinema helping make a whimsical puzzle game. Now we've seen everything. Number 2. Vin Diesel OK, retract that previous statement. Vin Diesel working on games? Ludicrous! No, not, not that one. Not that one. To be fair, this shouldn't be a surprise to any fans of the Fast and Furious star. Vin Diesel is one of the most high-profile Hollywood actors who thoroughly enjoys gaming, and we do mean thoroughly. He's apparently racked up over a thousand hours playing Ark Survival Evolved, huh, which is probably just enough time to tame one and a half brontosauruses on official server rates, am I right? <laughs> no? Nobody? OK, enough niche jokes. Understood. This frankly dangerous enthusiasm might explain why Vin Diesel has not only loaned his voice and likeness to the game's sequel, Arc 2, but has also been appointed Studio Wildcard's President of Creative Convergence, responsible for direct feedback during development. He's also been busy spotting bug fixes for the first game, didn't you know? Along with this, Vincent also founded developers Tygon Studios back in 2002, focusing on producing games that featured Mr. Diesel and his silver screen appearances. Such titles include Fast and Furious Crossroads, Wheelman and the critically acclaimed Chronicles of Riddick Escape from Butcher Bay, creating a studio dedicated to making games about yourself. Well played, Vinny. Now if you could just stop rating us in art, please. Number 1. Guillermo del Toro And this is why I hate these things. This probably sums up Del Toro's feelings on game production, to be honest. For the longest time, the legendary filmmaker behind Hellboy, Pan's Labyrinth and Pacific Rim just couldn't get a game finished. He once described himself as the albatross of video games, joking that he was a curse to all game projects he worked on. Shh. No, it's okay, Guillermo. Let's talk. They can't hurt you anymore. In 2006, he first worked on Sundown, a Left 4 Dead-style zombie shooter pitched to Terminal Reality, the same developers behind another unfinished horror project, Clive Barker's Demonic. Sadly, Sundown didn't even see Sunrise and was cancelled early in production. Then there was Insane, a survival horror title that got as far as some haunting Lovecraftian concept art before being canned in 2012. In fairness, 2008's Hellboy The Science of Evil did actually see release, albeit with little input from Del Toro and two awful reviews. Then there was 2014's PT, the terrifying playable teaser that preluded the hugely anticipated Silent Hills, but this 
joint venture with Hideo Kojima was also doomed after Kojima's messy split from Konami. But finally, Guillermo had his redemption in 2019. Thanks to Kojima's visionary piece, Death Stranding, Del Toro had done it at last, even if it was him simply lending his likeness to the character Dead Man. Most importantly, however, it helped Guillermo Del Toro score the highest honour of them all, a place on our coveted hunky boys list in 2020. Whoa! Absolutely worth the wait.